Defined abs will make you look significantly more fit while increasing confidence and attractiveness. Having a strong core will also improve your posture, prevent lower back pain, and it can help increase your overall athleticism since the core is what connects your upper and lower body together. Unfortunately, many people are wasting time on things that will never get their abs to show. So today I want to give you guys 10 steps that you can follow to guarantee that you get the best abdominal muscle growth and definition as soon as possible. And the first obvious step that we cannot ignore is that you have to make sure that you are lean enough. Unless you have a low enough body fat, you'll never see your abs, and you especially won't see them in a well-defined way. That's why one of the primary goals that you should have if you want well-defined abs is to get lean. To provide a concrete example, take a look at bodybuilder Lee Priest during a bulk and during a cut. In the first photo, his abs aren't visible even though he carries a lot of muscle mass. Trust me, the abs are still there, they're just under a thick layer of fat. Meanwhile, in the second photo, his abs are very clearly visible because he's much leaner. So you're probably wondering how lean do you have to be in order to see your abs? And the truth is that there's no set in stone answer. That's because we all have different body fat distributions. Some people tend to store more of their fat around their midsection, which means that they need to maintain an overall leaner body composition to see their abs compared to someone that doesn't store as much fat specifically around their midsection. While there are overall rule of thumb guidelines that men need to be about 12% body fat and women need to be around 19% body fat to see nice abs, this will fluctuate quite a bit from person to person. For example, even when my body fat percentage was significantly higher than normal, I could still see my abs because my body preferentially stores fat in other places. This also does have to do with another thing I recommend you do, which is to add more muscle onto your abs so that they pop out more. You would do this by training your abs with progressive overload. Just like any other muscle, if you want it to grow, you have to train the muscle in a way that exposes that muscle or muscle group to more challenging stimuli over time. So an example is if you could do a particular ab exercise for 12 reps in your last workout, you could try to go for 13 reps in your next workout session. Or you could do the same 12 reps but make it more challenging with some extra weight. Most people already train their abs with high reps, so I see very good results for my clients incorporating lower 8 to 10 rep sets and working on increasing weight load during the beginning of their ab workouts. With that said, higher rep ab training shouldn't be ignored or skipped over. Both high reps with low weight and low reps with heavy weight should be incorporated into your routine. It's just that usually people forget to do the heavy weight sets with abs rather than the high rep sets. It's important to do both high reps and low reps because data indicates that the abs have a balanced profile of around 55 to 58% slow twitch fibers and the rest as fast twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers are known to respond better to higher intensity, higher weight loads, and lower rep counts. Meanwhile, slow twitch responds better to higher reps with lower weight. So you want to do both low and high rep sets for optimal growth. One of the best ways to do this is to save the higher rep body weight sets for the end of your workout after you've already done all your heavy weighted exercises like weighted decline sit-ups, weighted crunches, and weighted pulse-ups. Or alternatively, you can do high and low rep sets together with supersets. Utilizing this superset strategy, you would do a high rep set with no weight right after every low rep set with heavy weight. An example would be to perform weighted decline sit-ups for 10 reps and then immediately perform 20 to 40 reps of jackknifes. You should also specifically focus on ab isolation exercises instead of general compound movements. Lots of people claim that doing compound exercises like squats, deadlifts, and barbell overhead presses are enough to develop flawless abs. But is that true? Well, if you're still in the beginner phase of your fitness journey, you likely can build some ab muscle by doing these compound lifts. But that won't be the case anymore once you've adapted to those exercises and you're past that beginner point. This is due to the fact that most ab exercises don't activate the abs effectively since your lumbar spine doesn't flex or rotate during those movements. We have a study that looked at muscle activity levels during many different exercises, including doing the back squat with a very heavy weight for only three reps. Surprisingly, researchers found that ab muscle activation was so low it didn't even reach 20% of maximum voluntary contraction. The straight leg sit-up on the other hand activated the external obliques and rectus abdominis by around 40%. That's more than double the activation produced by a very heavy set of squats. On top of that, another study found that during the clean and jerk exercise, core activity levels were also very low. This is interesting because the clean and jerk includes the movement patterns of a squat, deadlift, and overhead press all in one, which is why it's considered by many 
as an effective ab building exercise, but still it didn't train the abs very effectively. So what you want to do instead is focus on ab isolation exercises, and I'll give you the best exercises for that in just a minute. But first, you have to understand why static exercises don't work very well for developing your rectus abdominis or obliques. This is exactly why you shouldn't rely on ab specific static exercises like planks for example. One of the reasons planks aren't so great is that the movement is too easy to begin with for most people. Unless you're currently out of shape, you can likely hold the plank for at least a minute or two without adding weight. So it's not very effective in regard to muscle growth for the rectus abdominis and the obliques because the amount of tension overload is too low. There are of course ways in which you can increase the difficulty of a plank. One is by doing a long lever posterior pelvic tilt plank, and research has found that this movement resulted in over 100% activation relative to maximum voluntary contraction for the upper and lower abs and the obliques. You can also alternatively place a weight across your lower back and hips to increase tension overload as well. However, even though these modifications can cause a significant increase in muscle activation, I still wouldn't rely on the plank too much for abdominal muscle growth because it remains a static ab exercise, which is not the best way to build muscle. An equivalent of the plank would be an isometric exercise where you stack your hands together and create an isometric contraction pushing down with one hand and pushing up with the other to train your biceps on one side and your triceps on the other side. Instead, you want to focus on dynamic ab exercises. These are better for muscle growth because both the eccentric or the lowering phase and the concentric or the lifting phase, both of these offer unique benefits that you don't get from static or isometric movements. For example, research indicates you can produce two times more force during eccentric contractions and 50% more force during concentric contractions when compared to isometric contractions. That means dynamic exercises allow you to overload your muscles to a greater extent, leading to a more potent muscle growth stimulus. On top of that, the eccentric and the concentric phases activate different anabolic cell signaling patterns that don't get fully stimulated with isometrics. So if you want to build your abs, focus on dynamic movements that'll help you optimize muscle growth. That doesn't mean isometric core exercises like the plank can't be beneficial for their own reasons. They do have their benefits. For example, they may reduce the risk of lower back pain, or they may strengthen deeper stabilizer muscles and muscles like the transverse abdominis. But if you want to optimize ab development specifically to visually enhance the appearance of your abs, focus on dynamic exercises. This is why you also want to primarily focus on training your rectus abdominis, and many people get this part wrong. If you look at the ab development for most people, the most underdeveloped part of their abs is generally the rectus abdominis, also known as the six pack muscle. This doesn't mean that you should ignore the rest of your core, such as your obliques, but if you wanna shape perfect looking abs, your rectus abdominis should be the main focus. And there are two types of movements that you need to do to develop your rectus abdominis. The first one is a crunch type of movement. Examples are regular crunches, cable crunches, decline sit-ups, bicycle sit-ups, and other similar exercises. Even though the rectus abdominis is one muscle that connects from your upper abs all the way to your lower abs, Crunching and sit-up movements emphasize the upper part of your rectus abdominis. The other type of movement that you should be doing is leg raise variations. Examples include hanging and lying leg raises, pulse-ups, V-sit-ups, and exercises like those that emphasize the lower part of your rectus abdominis. Of course, keep in mind that you're not going to magically spot reduce belly fat even if you're doing the best ab exercises. Remember, one of the number one things that determine how good your abs look is how lean you are. Research shows that you cannot get rid of the belly fat just by doing ab exercises. In fact, in one study, scientists had participants doing a whopping four hours of ab training weekly for six weeks. And after all their hard work, their ab exercises didn't lead to belly fat loss or fat loss in general. So if you wanna get nice abs and you have a layer of body fat covering those abs, don't rely on doing endless amounts of crunches and sit-ups. Instead, you need to maintain a calorie deficit until you shed enough fat from your midsection to see them. The rules are pretty straightforward, but there is a catch that you have to keep in mind when creating your calorie deficit. So you probably already know that if you wanna gain weight, you have to consume more calories than you burn, and if you wanna lose fat, you have to consume fewer calories than you burn. But what most people forget is that you'll likely have to keep readjusting how many calories you eat per day multiple times throughout this process. The reason is that caloric expenditure varies throughout your fat loss journey due to factors like metabolic adaptation. So to ensure that you're actually maintaining a calorie deficit, you should measure your weight on a scale daily after waking up. It's important you do this at the same time each day. You write that number down, and at the end of the week, you should add up all the daily numbers and divide that total by seven. 
this will give you a weekly average. If you're losing at least 0.5% of body weight per week, keep up with your current calorie intake. But if you're not losing at least 0.5% of your body weight per week, drop your daily energy intake by 200 calories. So as you're reducing those calories, make sure that you're still getting enough protein. Aim to get at least 0.72 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day. So if you weigh 180 pounds, that means you would consume at least 130 grams of protein per day. Not only will that help you maintain muscle mass, but it'll also help you maintain a calorie deficit because protein is the most satiating macronutrient. This is why it's common to see results like what we saw in a 12 week study where participants with a high body fat percentage followed either a high protein diet or a standard protein diet. Those in the high protein diet lost an additional three pounds of body fat and around one extra inch off of their waist. So that about wraps it up. I really hope this video has helped. If it has, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, if you want any extra help with developing a balanced training routine where you get optimal strength gains, muscle growth, and fat burning, then head on over to my website. You can get a customizable diet plan, a recipe book, a 42-day workout plan, a full video exercise library, and a coach with just the click of a button. Best part is, just by showing up and doing your part, you'll be one of the thousands of people that receive the full refund at the end of the program, making it free. We refund you at the end to help motivate you to complete the program, and when you complete the program, you could be sure that you're going to get amazing results. To find out more, you can click the link below in the description, or you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon. Pumping.